Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's the top five moves of the strongest ever computer program of all time, Alpha Zero. Alpha Zero was an incredibly strong invention of Demis Hazabis and his team at DeepMind. I got these moves with help from very strong international player Matthew Sadler. Go and check out his YouTube channel, Game Changer. We're going to now be looking at those five moves. Remember to like and subscribe to this channel. Over to example number one. In the first example, we see an amazing move. It's white to play here. Can you spot Alpha Zero's move? This actually has been seen in other examples. Most recently, Nepo used it in one of his games to give you a big clue. Now, what is the move? The move that White played was the simply astonishing Bishop to B8. Take some of that, Stockfish 8. And this move is amazing because you put the Bishop on a seemingly ridiculous square but you're opening up the rook so it can dive into the action on g5. The main line goes with black taking on b8, which Stockfish did not play, and now rook takes g5. This bishop sacrifice has pulled away the rook from its defense of the king side, and black can no longer play a move such as rook to f6 in this position. And here, black could be completely helpless. The winning number when attacking is generally three pieces, and white has four pieces here. For example, let's say black tries to bring a piece back to defend. White would now play rook takes h5 check, and here bring in the knight. The big threat here is bishop to e6 check, making way for the queen to dive in. For example, something, let's say, like bishop to c6, we go check, and now queen to g6, cutting that king in half, and the threat is knight to h7 with checkmate. Another very nice threat here is rook to h8, and if bishop takes queen to g8, checkmate. Very nice stuff. So this would have led to an awesome attack for white. The game actually continued after bishop to b8 with the move queen to e8. And queen to e8 keeps the rook as a defensive piece. White now played Rook takes g5, and after queen to b8 check, white now moved his king. And in this position, white has a very strong attack. Black was able to play some very good defensive moves. This was a key idea. White now brought his knight in, and the bishop came into g6, with rook takes h5 to continue. The game continued for a number of moves, and it actually ended with Stockfish hanging on for a draw. But this bishop to b8 move, well, what a move to play. A seemingly impossible move, trying to divert your opponent's piece away to land a vicious blow on g5. Beautiful stuff there from the incredibly strong computer program Alpha Zero. Example number two puts us on the black side of the game. We're playing Alpha Zero in this position here. And this is a potential variation. In the game, white actually played queen d1, black went on to win. But the key move was what happens if white tries to hold on to his knight with knight to b5. And of course, Alpha Zero had seen a brilliant possibility here. It wasn't actually played in the game, but it was in his calculations. Can you see the move? I like this one because it's very human-like in some way, meaning that we have three pieces attacking or pointing towards white's king, but we want to try and bring in more pieces and open up that king. And the move to play, have you got it? Is bishop to f3. And the idea of this is to tear open the white king, but also to allow this rook entrance into a square such as g6. I think a beautiful move here. For example, now if white captures on f3, we continue with rook a6 and three pieces, the magic number is, is too much for white to handle. Let's say white tries king to h1, the rook comes over, and there's too many threats to these pawns, white is completely lost. Another very nice line with bishop to f3 is something along the lines of g3. And here black continues by bringing in the reinforcements. Again, this bishop cannot be captured because it opens up the file towards the king. 
and after king h2, queen to h4. And this is a stunning idea that Alpha Zero had. You can't take the queen because it's pinned, and if white tries to defend a little bit more here, then the rook comes over to g6, and after one more move, let's say a4, the rook now sneaks up to g5. Can you see black's idea yet? Well, let's say a5. I will actually leave it for you to find the very nice checkmate that Alpha Zero had in mind. So this was the second idea, Bishop F3. How do you like that, Sam? On to idea number three now. In this third example, we see Alpha Zero attacking with real, real strength. He sacrificed a piece to pull out the black king, but white is a piece down. The queen is also attacked, so what on earth does white do to keep the initiative? And it's a real piece of geometric beauty, this next move. And in the olden days, you would have thought computers are not possible as such concepts, but clearly they are possible of things of beauty in this modern era. And what should the move be? Well, the move, can you see it here, is queen to h1. Now, this might not look like a, a great move, putting the queen in the corner of the board like that, but it's astonishing and one of the most amazing moves I've ever seen. The point is, we're going to try to get rid of a key defender of the black king, the bishop on f5, by moving our bishop into e4. And our attack rages on. For example, Stockfish tried to defend now with king to g7. And now the bishop slid into the position on e4. And after bishop g6, white removes that defender. And now the queen creeps back out because it's done its job on that square. It all has, always had chances to come into e4. Combined with the two rooks on the open files and black's bad development and slightly exposed king, there's nothing that Stockfish can do to save this position. For example, bishop to f6, and why else did the queen move here? Because of king g2. Uh, beautiful stuff, using the h1 square again, but this time for the rook. And after the rook gets to h1, well, white has a deadly attack, which he went on to convert in very beautiful style. We don't have enough room to keep it in this video, but go and check out Matthew Sadler and Natasha Reagan's book, Game Changer, if you want more details. On to example number four, and I've actually seen this plan in action. In the last game, it was kind of used. What is White's idea here? It's maybe not one move this, but a, a combination of a mini plan two moves here to get another white piece into the attack. But when I say I've seen this plan being used, only in a very silly sense, in a rather humorous way, which is never good for the side doing it. But now Alpha Zero plays the astonishing King to H2. Now again, you might be thinking, come on, Simon, what's astonishing about moving your king to h2? Well, if we think about this in human terms, the black king is quite weak because the h-pawn has been dragged over here for some unknown reason. But none of the pieces that white has at the moment can cause that much damage to the black king. When you can't cause much damage with your pieces that are out, you need to bring in the reinforcements. Do, 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 do. Come on, boys. So what are the reinforcements here? Well, the rook on f1. And after black plays bishop to f8, white now plays rook to h1. And this plan of king h2 and rook h1, and on the next move, king g1, is astonishing. The rook has basically jumped over the king, decastled itself to now get on to the open h-file and to pressurize the black king, which leads to a winning attack. A lovely maneuver there. And again, this Alpha Zero program, finding beauty. And can computers think in an artistic sense? Well, yes, they can. And one of the really interesting things of Alpha Zero, and if you watch the documentary on Go, Alpha Go, you'll see the top Go player in the world also found moves from Alpha Zero that it couldn't explain. It opened up new doors of perception. And uh, this is something is a joy to behold. And that was one stunning maneuver. Now, the final example, we see Alpha Zero in a position with the black pieces. 
some messy attacking position. I could even see the likes of Kasparov being black in this in this situation. It looks like black's attack has dissipated. There's nothing here. White is material up, and if black doesn't find a good continuation, black will just be lost. But there is a move to keep that party going. So what is the move? It is knight to d5. An astonishing way to try and bring the knight nearer to the white king, but mainly vacating the f6 square for black's bishop. And if that bishop can get on this open diagonal, the white king will be exposed. The main line of attack goes pawn takes knight, queen c2 check, and after king a1, now e4. The bishop coming to f6 with deadly effects there. You can see this line is going to be checkmate very soon. So simply beautiful move, this knight d5. The game continued, rook takes d5, bishop takes d5. But after king b1, bishop b7, the game is now pretty much equal. Both sides have weaknesses. White has a poor majority, ended in a draw because both kings are weak. Without this astonishing shot, knight d5, well, black is just lost. Sometimes you have to find amazing moves in desperate situations. Maybe again, a little bit like life. We've got to find and we've got to dig deep at difficult and in difficult times. Five stunning examples there. Remember to like this video. Please do. Please do. I, I'm not going to beg. Not much. And subscribe to the chess.com channel. Quite possibly the best chess channel in the universe. This is really a turning point, some would say, in the development of AI. Computers being able to think for themselves. That's how Alpha Zero was programmed in a very different way to previous engines, learning from its own mistakes like a human would. Very amazing developments and could be a big step in our evolution. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be back again with more soon.